Hi and welcome to this update video about the Lo-Fi U-Tape Scrubber. Um, great news everyone, I'm finally happy <laughs> with the core of this circuit. Uh, it's only taken, well, a year since Machina, uh, when I first showed off the, um, or rather wasn't able to show off the first version of it. DivKid came over and he had a look and it was kind of working at the time, but it seemed there was some issue with the first version when you went back and forth. Um, who is it? Graham Dunning, who bought one of my um, tape ones, he found out as well, you know, when you plug in a head um, to a re replay amplifier, it takes a moment for it to kind of, um, yeah, start to work, I guess, um, without going into too much detail. And then we... Uh, had that same problem on the first one where sometimes be go going between record and playback um playback would take a long time um and then the one good thing about that was that there was no click um the second version of this which you know i i improved you know the first version didn't even have a active record circuit it was just the modular signal going straight to the record head and then you'd switch back to swap it to go to the replay amplifier from my um, iec tape head module um, and then the second version i installed some uh, op amps and uh, ac bias to try and drive the record circuit it's very similar to kind of a wem copycat uh it sounds great um lots of people have got them um i think i've sold about 40 of those um really happy with them but i knew that i could take the record circuit a bit further because it's you know it's all about driving current and being able to mix it with um you know a high frequency ac bias signal and as great as the you know i was only using standard op amps so by by really um, selecting the right components, um, I've been able to take that a bit further. And now the recording is super clean. It almost amazes me that these were at some point uh, dictaphones. They're sounding, you know, a lot closer to kind of like a mar Marantz now. Um, I'm putting my neck out a bit there saying that, but uh, it's all relative compared to the first versions, which were just super grungy and uh, these kind of weird lo-fi machines where you could mix waveforms and just get something related but a very distorted version of the original these ones are actually i might even have to get rid of the lo-fi because i think it's there now i think i can call it u tape scrubber now the cool thing about that is in the midst of trying to finish this one me being me i i jumped the gun and i jumped to a v2 and this one has some interesting features on i'm not going to go on about this yet that's hopefully going to be ready for machina but i don't think the boards will be here um instead of going on about that i kind of would i think what's best to just show is how much better this record circuit is than you know um some of the originals and yeah um i haven't got a lot here this is my uh new workshop back in worcestershire my hometown um so all i'm going to be throwing into it today is like a test signal um but what we'll be able to hear i think compared with some of the older ones i mean you could hear phasing but this is really delicate and it actually sounds quite sweet and you know i dare i say it beautiful unlike most of my kind of harsh noisy kind of um approaches to electronics you know this is starting i mean i might be able to make ambient music anyway <laughs> let's see what happens so uh, i'm going to just bring up the levels on this um oscillator just got a sine wave at the moment. I've got some nice kind of texture and crackles in here already. Um, anyone who's not familiar with the way this kind of um, works from the earlier videos, it's really basic. We just send an audio signal in. Uh, they're constantly set up so that it goes audio through. Um, you know, I thought if you wanted to mute the audio before, um, that would be possible. Uh, or have volume control like this um, and then we want to record a signal so there's two ways of doing that we could just go down into record and it'll mix the signal a bit with that noise maybe if we go so you can hear it's somewhere between the two there's a bit of mixing go um we can speed up the sample or slow it down we've recorded this one near the highest speed 
which is going to give the highest kind of quality recording. We can make it go backwards. But um, to really kind of saturate the signal, let's and maybe do a little sine sweep. Can you hear the mixing there? And then as we start to detune this. You can punch holes in it. And in the gaps now, if we record again, So there's lots of different ways to kind of change the um, timbre by mixing signals together and also to give um, amplitude variations uh, either by bringing signals in or erasing sections. I love the way that when it slows down now you just can really hear. It might be interesting um, to have a amplifier on the output um, for adding some extra gain obviously when we're going slower. The magnetic force if you'd like to think about it is relatively smaller so it's going to be worthwhile you know amplifying that signal a little bit more. And yeah, I'm just going to keep going now. Um, I'm going to chuck a load of more um, uh, test signals onto it and just keep saturating it. And then I'm going to kind of call it a day here. Um, I'm just amazed I've got all this set up because uh, I don't know how YouTubers and people do it. But yeah, here we go. <laughs> Just keep adding the same tone. Frequency. It just starts to layer up and start dancing. Now the switching circuit. It's the things you don't notice, but I've spent two years listening to this click every time I go back and forth. I can't tell you how satisfying that is. Um, I'm not going to pull this one out, but on the back of it, I've added a whole uh, muting circuit uh, inspired by the Juno 106 and my days repairing, um, which mutes the output for 80 milliseconds during... Um, it's switching, so yeah, we don't hear the click anymore, which is, um, yeah, music to my ears. Uh, I did try and sort it all around the click, but uh, around the switch. Oh, just detuning it a bit with the fine. And this is probably the first time I've done a video without delay. something with a bit of a tombrel change.
Now, it's not vault proactive, but, you know, if we got a sequencer going into this, we could set it to zero uh, and then have it step, maybe, when we want it to and by a speed, you know, that we choose. Um, we could use an LFO to make it... dance back and forth. And... I haven't shown recording yet, so, it, you know, we've been recording at a steady um, speed. What happens if we slow it down? Well, it's going to actually sound like it's pitching up. There you go. So conversely, if we slow this down when we record... So you can get this kind of um, adding up and layering of loads of little pitch sweeps and bends and we haven't got this going through a delay but at the moment but this is the perfect fodder to give that kind of um, tape feedback um, soundscape uh, kind of approach to ambient music you know chucking a load of signs into a delay layering them up smudging them all out and just creating this big wash in the background um, so big sounds for a little tape. Um, I'm over the moon with these now, and the fact that I'm actually finally happy with that record circuit, I've finalised this clicking, um, I can deal with 80 milliseconds. Uh, you know, and this one doesn't even have, I mean, I really rushed this video, I'm not um, in my workshop. You know, normally we've got a standoff here which secures the tape even better, which improves the kind of wow and flutter. And even without these things that I normally add, it's sounding great. It comes with a cover normally as well. Um, but yeah, good news is I'm going to put them back up for pre-ordered now. Um, and I think, you know, I've got to send off some boards after Machina, which is, um, uh, well, yeah, I don't think I'm going to get a, the board revision done in time to send off before Machina now. So uh, that'll be the 12th of um, October. So after that, I'll be ordering the board. So I imagine by... Um, October, November, yeah, end of November, maybe uh, December, uh, I'll be able to get some of these out. I'm not going to do a big run. Uh, I like doing um, small kind of runs of 10 and 20 uh, to see, you know, uh, you know what people think of them. But as a core, I think this is done. Um, I would uh, like to say that I am going to add features to it. And interestingly you know the the some of these work and they're great but this one doesn't have this new new record circuit so i'm gonna have to just put these at the back of the drawer but the new ideas for the um features are to have a muting switch for the audio through uh that's now using you know i've improved it so much since this one I've, i'm using the same muting circuit which i used for this from the juno 106 to mute the audio through um Potentially that could be gatable, but I don't think that's the point of this module. Um, you know, if I just make it so that you can even mute the audio in and maybe mute the audio out, but I'm not sure about, you know, the, the playback um, because you can just go into record if you want to do that. But um, you can do everything outside of the module in terms of mixing, which I think, you know, it isn't about mixing so much this is more of a kind of way of sampling sounds and then layering it back on top so um it, but the cool thing is if you have the mute you could then do parallel processing um so yeah um the other feature i wanted to add was a lo-fi switch which would kind of revert the play circuit back to um like v1 i suppose uh we would remove the ac bias and you know the signal would just be incredibly distorted what happens is you know as you waveform um it acts like a carrier and a modulator you know you mix your audio in with a high frequency signal and then that linearizes the recording process um when you take that away uh what you find is that going through the zero point uh there's a lot of distortion um without that ac bias but 
that's super interesting. Like I said, the first one, um, you ended up with these incredibly distorted versions, you know, of an original waveform, kind of like um, chucking things through a um, uh, fa- PPL, um, yeah, phase locked, no, PLL, <laughs> uh, phase locked loop, um, and getting like a really kind of crunchy, wonky version of an oscillator. Um, it was great at that. So being able to do that again would be cool. Um, maybe some lights just to show you what mode it's in. But the main feature that I'm going to be adding later on is a scratch mode. So this is inspired by Tom Whitwell and his um, uh, control module, which I've got in my system for, um, my, you know, my own one for kind of controlling tape speeds and as a macro control. And what I found was amazing about it was that you could send the CV in and it had this ability to make it feel like you were turning the tape, like it had inertia. And that was a bit of a eureka moment. Um, I started experimenting, and some people might see, you know, these discs with wheels on uh, that I was using to pull the tape forwards and backwards. Um, Those will be in the pipeline, but being able to just do that with a standard kind of CV control, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. So the new one will have a scratch mode down here, and... um, I've also been playing around with including a comparator. If we listen to the output, there's always a thump on the uh, tape splice. You know, if you do it really, really well, of course there won't be. It'll be minimal, but uh, most of us humans um, who do like a butt joint kind of splice dead 90 degree on these will find that there is a thump. Now, uh, when life gives you lemonade, make gates. So (laughs) that's what I'm going to do with it. I'm going to um, use a filter and a comparator that from the 2HP CMP uh, in this module. I don't know whether it could have a um, threshold adjustment here, which would be really interesting. Uh, and then you'd be able to get a clock out effectively or gate patterns. When you put the record in, this the, the arrays, this old fashioned style of using a magnet, yeah, it wipes the tape, but I mean, it adds a massive DC offset. So that comes through the audio. But it, the cool thing is, you know, we can generate gates with that. Um, I'm not going to go on and on. I mean, maybe a bias adjustment. Uh, I think it's more important that I start to mod- make this usable within modular. So on the next version, there will be headers, which will give you gates depending on whether you're in record or playback. That'll help kind of automate some other stuff in your system. Um, I'm very close now to working out a way to make it gateable to go it into record and playback. But anyway, these things take time. As everyone's seen, it's taken me, you know, a year to go from um, the original to something that I'm happy with. Um, the U-tape rack in the background is... Um, uh, sorry, the one U-tape rack system in the background's yeah taking up a lot of my uh, energy so don't hold your breath for these um this is you know what i'm going to be selling for a while and then i think this could be um hopefully machine uh 2025 but uh we'll see when we get there anyway i just want to say thanks to everyone for their patience with this project and for their support um with my stupid ideas um yeah it wouldn't be possible without you um so yeah, um, peace, love, and tape loops. And until next, li- next time, um, keep experimenting. Cheers now. Bye.